all right so hello everyone uh, this is my uh, tutorial on astro navigation for beginners it's a very basic tutorial if you have no idea um, what astro navigation is and uh, you're just interested in knowing how mariners use the stars to find their position on the earth this is the video for you and also if you practice astro navigation or at some point you've you've actually done some astro navigation and uh, you've been overwhelmed by uh, the steps involved and uh, you know all the uh, all the arithmetic and the, you know the seemingly meaningless series of steps you got to do to in order to find your position and you're not really sure how it works actually this is the video for you so basically if you're an absolute beginner or you've been using uh, astro navigation and you just want to know you know understand a little bit more about the concept uh, this is the video for you so just keep watching all right so this video is all about understanding the concepts okay so um, yeah let me just uh, start my uh, annotation okay so this is all about the concept so I am NOT going to be telling you how to open a nautical almanac how to look up values in the almanac I'm not going to tell you about site detection tables or you know how to go through these these tables with these numbers there and you know, how to pick out the right number and then put it into your calculation sheet do the arithmetic I'm not going to be talking about any of this not site reduction tables I'm not going to be talking about sextants but I will be talking about a clock so of all the things you're probably used to while doing astro navigation uh, and those of you who haven't done any astro navigation you don't need to worry at all because I will not be talking about any of these things right this is all about the concepts and just understanding the concepts but I will need you to understand the clock so that's probably the only prerequisite you need to understand this entire lecture all right let's move on okay you're probably gonna need a pencil and a piece of paper because um, well it's just easier to understand things when you write them down and um, I'll be using diagrams most of the time so uh, you might want to make notes or if you can just follow along just by looking at what I'm doing that's fine also you will need to use your head alright so you know put some lube oil into those mechanisms in your brain because without you thinking along if you just try to listen to what I'm saying you will not learn anything you need to think along and apply what I'm saying in your own head all right so um, let's move on okay so I will be using this program called open SCAD this is a free program uh, which you can just download off the internet um, and I'll be using these 3d models like you can see here to, to present the ideas uh, across to you now you, you gotta try and remember that even though this model is actually a 3d model I'm constrained by the fact that you're looking at a 2d screen okay so I'm projecting a 3d image or a 3d object onto a 2d screen so I'll do my best but you will have to kind of you know make a leap of imagination when I'm when I'm drawing things because as you can probably understand it's not easy to project a 3d image onto a 2d screen which is which is what you're looking at you're looking at a computer screen okay so you know you need to use your imagination when I draw lines and things like that okay uh, so this is uh, what I'm using open SCAD alright now I will be uploading all the 3d images uh, the 3d files that I've made so that if you're interested you can download them and uh, if you then download open SCAD you can open these files yourself and play around with them and try to understand better so I would recommend that if you if you find that you're learning something from this lecture and you want to you want to sort of uh, um, you know uh, you know get a better understanding of uh, what I'm saying well you could download these files right in open SCAD it's kind of like a it's it's like a computer program you see it's not like you so you got to create these objects using a computer program almost so it may be okay for some of you some of you may not but in case you're interested these files are available for download in the video description this is important in this uh, tutorial we will assume nothing 
so you can just come in here with a blank slate and uh, you know with no assumptions at all no previous knowledge needed and um, at the end of it you should understand how Aspen navigation works so let's just uh, jump right into it alright the first lesson okay lesson number one light rays from distant objects reach us as parallel lines I'm gonna say that again if you have a distant object like a star or the Sun all right and that is emitting light okay that light will eventually reach our eyes or it will reach the earth rather okay and when it does reach the earth they will reach these lines will be parallel to each other so these are the three takeaways this is very important all right this is the foundation of astro navigation light rays from distant objects reach us as parallel lines and I'm not going to do a rigorous proof here or anything but I'm just going to just give you a vague you know, just an understanding of what I mean alright so here's a light source these three light bulbs okay and here's the here's your eye alright as you view it okay now if you look at the way the light reaches your eye you know the edges of your eye from this light source okay you can see that's the angle right now if I move the light source away slightly right, and these are isotropic light source which means they're throwing light equally in all directions okay so it's not as if they're directional sources you know they're just throwing the light equally in all directions okay so let's look at this one and now the same thing so light rays from this now my diagrams may not be a little as good as I'd like them to be oh hang on what am I, okay all right here we go you just use my light pen yeah that's better that's much better so you can clearly see that if this was the angle A right and when they move the light further away this is the angle B you can see that B is less than A now let's move the light even further away to over here and now the light rays from the source will probably reach you like this okay there you go and you it's easy to understand that angle C is less than B and it's less than A also so it's reasonable to assume that if I move that light source all the way to infinity then these rays will become parallel to each other because the angle is reducing between see this angle is less than this angle is less than this angle right so C is less than B is less than A and so if I go out to infinity eventually that angle will become zero and so if the angle between the two lines are is zero the two rays of light then we say that they are parallel to each other so this angle here is zero right and the object is at infinity okay so I hope that's clear to everyone that's not a earth-shattering uh, you know presumption to make so uh, let's just uh, let's move on okay now so if you have a star which is obviously so far away it's almost at infinity I guess so the light rays from the star would be parallel to each other but because of the limitations of um, you know using a computer screen to show you what I mean let's say this is the earth so you can see the earth over here so this is the earth right now when I draw things for you I'll draw a star which will look like this you know I'll probably use this clip art image or whatever of the Sun and uh, that will be a star but obviously I can't draw this you know at infinity because it'll 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 be at the end of this you know outside the screen so um, what I will do is I will put the star where you can see it right but the rays of light that come will come parallel to each other all right so they'll come like this so this is something that I'm limited by just by the way of drawing things so when you see a star like this you should when, when, in my diagrams you shouldn't imagine that the star is shooting light like this that's that's not correct there's no angle here they're all parallel to each other and that's only because I'm limited by you know I have to draw the star somewhere I can't draw it out at infinity so I hope that's clear okay all right let's move on right lesson two the earth is a sphere Right. remember we're taking nothing for granted we're gonna do everything uh, from scratch so how do we know the earth is a sphere well a few thousand years ago people thought the earth was flat and uh, one of the you know people started looking at the way the earth cast its shadow on the moon right and so 
you can see that here this is not a very good uh, picture of a, of a lunar eclipse but over here you can see this is the shadow of the earth cast by the moon uh, sorry yeah the shadow of the earth on the moon all right and that's always this kind of circular arc is what you'll always see so ancient people figure out well the only way an object can cast a perfectly circular shadow is if it's, it's a sphere there's no other object no matter where you throw the light from right so the sunlight's hitting the earth possibly you know over thousands of years from various different directions but always when the lunar eclipse was observed there was a circle the arc was that of a circle so the only way that an object can throw a circular shadow is if it's a sphere right so lesson number two the earth is a sphere right next question so what's the radius of that sphere we need to find out what is the radius of the earth and uh, if you think about it think about this think about the enormity of the question you're asking here what is the radius of the earth would you believe that if I told you the radius of the earth um, you know there was this guy called Eratosthenes ancient uh, Greek all right he calculated the radius of the earth 2400 years ago 2400 years ago he calculated the radius of the earth think of the think of the genius of that right that achievement probably you know compares to Galileo and Newton uh, and Einstein in its uh, in its in its significance all right so the next thing we need to learn is exactly how did this guy Eratosthenes calculate the radius of the earth because in our calculations when we do astronavigation we will want to know this radius that's very important to us the radius of the earth so let's see how Eratosthenes did it okay All right, calculating the radius of the Earth. Would you believe that Eratosthenes did this 2,400 years ago, and all he needed, all right, was well, obviously a very clever brain, but he just needed a stick in the ground. So I'm using a tree over here to represent that. So suppose this is the ground, right? He needed a stick placed vertically in the ground, and he needed a water well, you know, a well with water in it. So I'll come to the water well in a second, but first I just want to demonstrate something about the stick in the ground. Okay, so if the sun, now this is just simple, you know, you know, this is nothing uh, fancy here, like simple stuff. So let's imagine that the sun is over here. Okay, so this is the sun, right? This is the stick, and the rays of light are coming parallel from the sun. Obviously, it's going to cast a shadow, right? So this is the shadow of the tree. Okay. Now, if I know the height of the tree, right, and I know the length of the shadow, I can calculate this angle. That's simple, right? Um, you can do it any way you want. You could do Pythagoras theorem or you, whatever way you want it. But it's, it's, this is just simple standard, uh, you know, eighth class geometry or maybe seventh class geometry. If you know the height of, a, of the stick and you know the length of the shadow, you can calculate this angle. Obviously, if the sun were directly overhead, you'd probably get, you know, if the sun were directly overhead you'd probably get a very small shadow or no shadow at all we've all seen this happen if the sun moves over here right you could probably get a shadow like this and you'd be able to calculate the angle that the sun is at right so this is important being able to calculate the angle that the sun's rays okay the rays of the sun what angle are they striking the earth, the surface of the earth at, your surface, right? So you're standing here. At what angle are the sun's rays hitting the surface of the earth? Depend where you are, right? So this is because the earth is curved. Let's say the earth was curved like this. Obviously, these rays would not form the same angle over here, right? Let's just draw a curved earth like this now, all right? But to me, locally, so this is the local, this is a local angle the sun let me call it that local angle of the sun right? these are just terms I'm inventing as I go along actually I don't really know the actual terms but this is called the local angle of the sun right so just with a stick right and a little bit of geometry you can calculate the local angle of the sun today of course we use the sextant for things like that 
but for our purposes of our lesson over here we can just use a stick right so that's the basic now I'd like to move over to open uh, SCAD where I'll be using a 3d model to demonstrate how exactly Eratosthenes uh, calculated the radius of the earth now why am I doing this experiment well I'll, I'll why am I repeating this experiment for you and uh, because it's it's critical to astro navigation to understand how exactly he did this because that's exactly the same principle we use in astro navigation so um, let me just close these windows and uh, I'll start recording again after I open up open a scat right so don't go away